quite see the day, Kathy, but six years, two months, and seven days later, finally, what we've been waiting for. The Culinary Union announced just a short time ago that the Frontier Strike is finally reaching an end. Over the years, the Alardi family, which owns, or who owns, I should say, the Frontier Hotel, could not reach a settlement with the Culinary Union, but now, as of Friday, the hotel has been sold to a Kansas City industrialist. Yes, I consider it a win. It benefited not only the strikers and their families, it benefited this whole community. The standard living is based on the culinary contracts, whether they work in a union house or not. I cried. I'm so happy. This is just finally an ending to this awful mess that's going on on the strip. It was, uh, I'm still crying. Polly, as we reported, Phil Ruffin owns a string of 12 hotels, including a casino resort in the Bahamas, which is where we reached him this morning. Ruffin is currently awaiting licensing in Kansas City for a dog racing track he's buying there. Negotiations to buy the Frontier began about six weeks ago, he said. Ruffin had been looking for a Las Vegas property for some time, wanted something on the strip, and started negotiating with Frontier owner Margaret Alardi, as well as with leaders of the Culinary Union. The six years of strike have certainly hurt, hurt the property. And, um, you know, the, you can't have all those culinary workers refusing to cross the line. You're talking about all the hotel workers. And so you've lost a lot of uh, local business. It's uh, something we wanted to do. We've worked with unions before, we've, and, it's, and it's worked for us. Uh, so we were able to strike the deal and um, feel very comfortable that the Lardy family, for whatever reason, decided to take, uh, illegally by the way, because it has been proven in courts, take their pension, health and welfare, cut their hourly wage two to three dollars an hour. So this strike uh, was uncalled for, but they were pushed into it. They had no choice. Uh, they had to strike uh, to protect their welfare, plus protect the standard of living for this whole community. 6 p.m. yesterday when they told me, I just can't believe it. I get checked, you know, I like to get... I can tell you because I can find the words how I feel that yesterday and I'm still Did you ever think this day would come? No. You know, I'm waiting for but uh, it's just a fate yeah. that I have keep it on, keep it on. You know, but sometimes, you know, I see too long the end and now it's like a, it's right here, it's now, it's today and uh, Big celebration for you and several others tonight. Well, it's yes. going to be good for the city. It's going to be good for the workers. It's going to be good for uh, these people will probably be able to buy this for $165 million And as you said, get this problem resolved, get the union contracts in place. And maybe that maybe he wants to run it. Maybe he wants to turn it over. But I'm sure it'll be more valuable All the, the union future. workers and leaders say this strike was worth every single one of the $26 million they spent over the past six years. They say all that cost makes a brighter future for generations to come. It is indeed brighter for the 550 striking union workers who can now get their jobs back with seniority and pay equal to what the other strip hotel workers make. The future is not as bright, though, for the workers who've been crossing the picket lines here at the frontier. They now claim to be left in the dark. It happens, happens. Have they said anything about inside? Or? No, it's the talk of the place. Everybody's talking about it. What's everybody's re main reaction? I think a lot of people are glad to see somebody new coming in. We have uh, reached an agreement on behalf of the unions with Mr. Ruffin. However, I want to stress at the beginning that that does not mean that the frontier strike is over yet. But it does mean that the frontier strike will be over. John Wilhelm, the man you saw there, has been in touch with Bill Bible, the chairman of the Nevada Gaming Board. Bill Bible says he will work as fast as he can to get that gaming license issued to the new owner, Mr. Ruffin of Frontier. As soon as that gaming license is issued, those workers can go back to work. And he estimates that will probably take a few extra months. We're back at 7.30 on this Thursday morning, a beautiful fall morning. But before we get to the news headlines, there's a story out of Las Vegas we wanted to tell you about. Back in 1991, hundreds of union workers at the Frontier Hotel walked out after failed contract negotiations, launching this nation's longest ongoing strike. But after six years, an end is in sight following the sale of the Frontier Hotel earlier this week. As picket captain for the union, Barbara Bo Boucher has been on the line every night for six years. Barbara, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. I understand the strike won't be officially over until the new owner of the hotel gets his gaming license in Nevada, but how confident are you that you'll actually be off the line soon? Well, we've heard from the Gaming Control Board that they're going to try and expedite Mr. Ruffin's license application, so we figure very soon, with 
I'm hoping within less than six months. When this strike started back in 1991, Barbara, did you have any idea that you might be out six years? Not originally, but our plans were to be out as long as it took to get us our con union contract. The hotel also offered to pay or to give you folks three meals a day? Yes. Uh, William Bennett, owner of the Sahara Hotel, has been sending out a food truck three times a day to feed the strikers. It was something I found strange, Barbara, is that after all of this, I understand that you're not actually sure you'll go back to work at the Frontier, even if the strike has ended. Well, right now, when we do settle and Mr. Ruffin does have his contract, I'm planning on going to Disneyland, and then I'll decide whether I go back to the hotel. It's like that famous commercial. Where are you going next? I'm going to Disneyland. Going to Disney. Hey, yeah. good luck to you and the rest of the workers, and thanks for spending time with us this morning. National Labor Relations Board declared the strike an unfair labor practice and even forced the Frontier to pay back millions in lost wages and pension benefits. The Frontier paid, and the strike continued. We're not going to give up. You know, we have no reason to give up, you know. And like I told you, we were the Rosa Parks of the other union now. It doesn't matter if there's one of us or 100 of us. We're here. We are definitely here. Since 1991, Tony Alio has been out here day after day, hoping to eventually go back to his job as a waiter at the Frontier Hotel, a position he held for nine years before the strike. Now there's reason to believe that will happen soon. An overwhelming victory on our part. We stood it out. We told them we would. I think it's great. I think it's the best way that this thing can end. We have a new owner who has a clean slate. The Lardies are leaving. I mean, that is the best thing for the community, best thing for the strikers, best thing for the union, everybody involved. It's just like during World War II. We defeated Japan. We rebuild it. And that's what we have to do with the frontier. We have to rebuild it. Will you be going back to the frontier? Yes, I will. What is that? Well, just out of the principle of the thing, and maybe it will be what it was before, a top resort. Uh, while we uh, uh, believe that it will be necessary for the strikers to go through one more Christmas on strike with their families, uh, uh, it will uh, be a very different Christmas from um, the ones that have gone by since uh, Christmas 1991. Mom sold that, and I'm happy for Mom. What are the Alardis going to do now that the Frontier sold? Uh, I'm going to go work down at Casino Royale. Okay, listen, have a nice night. Strikers say they don't feel any animosity toward those who are working inside the frontier now, but they say they are looking forward to returning to work and turning this into what they call a family environment once again. Because to be a striker at the frontier is to be able to say that when you had to fight for your kids and your family and your future, you didn't back down, not one inch you didn't back down. What we are is union. What we are is family. We are brothers and sisters, middle class Americans, fighting, fighting to protect our standard of living, fighting to protect our way of life, fighting to make sure that this country is better for those 99 kids that have been born during this four long years of this godforsaken strike because of the alarming. One day, 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 one day